Thank you to my Patreon and Tier 2 YouTube members. I only use three Titan builds during my day to day inside Destiny 2, and in this video I wanted to share with you my favorite. This build utilizes Heart of Inmost Light, a Titan exotic that was nerfed pretty heavily right before Lightfall launched, but despite this you'll come to learn that Hoyle is easily still one of the best exotics you can use right now. When everything shown in this video is equipped, you will be throwing insanely powerful grenades once every couple of seconds, while also punching holes through even the toughest of enemies. Add clear, boss DPS, ability regen, and more will be at your fingertips, and at the end, I'll be giving you a long list of absolutely diabolical weapons for you to mix and match with this build to optimize your carnage even more. So with that said, subscribe to the channel for more PvE content, go follow the Twitch channel if you haven't already, and let's jump into this. There are three main things that we're going to focus on today to optimize our usage of this exotic and get the most out of it. 1. Prioritize grenade regen above all else. 2. Ensure that we never run out of orbs of power. And 3. Increase our average survivability. When compared to Solar and Strand Titan, the Arc Titan isn't quite as beefy, so it's very important for us to address this if we're taking this build into endgame. First, let's talk about grenades. Grenades are going to be the central and most important thing we focus on today because when it comes to dishing out raw ability damage, few things in Destiny come close to the level of pulse grenades. We're going to want to optimize our build in such a way to get the most out of these possible, starting with our exotic, of course, the Heart of Inmost Light. For those that don't know, this armor piece states that when using one of your three abilities, the others will become empowered. Empowered abilities have faster regen timers, and in case of grenades or melees, also deal more damage. Because of this, in our subclass menu, we'll be choosing two abilities for the shortest regen timers and that are the easiest to use on the fly. For the class ability, we're going to be choosing the Thruster. This will not only be crucial when it comes to our movement, but it also has a base cooldown of 36 seconds and doesn't lock us in a long animation when we use it. For our melee, we have the Thunderclap. This allows us to tap or hold our button to charge up our fist and unleash arc energy on any enemies in front of us. This can also be changed out for the Seismic Strike melee, which will have the same cooldown and provides a blinding effect when hitting targets, but this ability can disrupt the flow of combat as you're not always going to be in a state of building momentum through sprinting, so I personally use Thunderclap as a means to get my melee off faster and to get more grenades onto the battlefield without ever really needing to think about it. Next, we're going to equip the aspect Touch of Thunder. This will allow our pulse grenades to deal more damage over time and even grant them the ability to create ionic traces. These are bolts of arc energy that will travel along the ground and grant us ability energy which is again crucial to getting our grenade back. With this, we literally use our grenade to get our next grenade and it's phenomenal to use on more beefy targets that are a bit more stationary. For the fragments, we'll of course be running Spark of Magnitude to increase the duration of our grenade while also pairing this with Spark of Shock which will allow our pulse grenades to apply Jolt. Jolted targets not only take more incoming damage, but it also chains to nearby enemies allowing our grenades to have an add clear bonus. And for those new to the game as well, Jolt will also stun overload champions which is always welcome in in-game content. The last fragment here that's going to benefit our grenade is going to be the Spark of Discharge, and this is going to allow our arc weapons to create ionic traces on kills. And while this build will consistently have us using our abilities on a ridiculous cadence, don't think that weapons are useless here. It's quite the opposite in fact, and that's why, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to share with you a list of them later on that will transcend this playstyle to the next level. Now when it comes to our grenade related mods, on the gauntlets we'll be running Grenade Kickstart, and this is going to consume any of our armor charges that we accumulate in exchange for an instant boost to getting our next grenade back. I also have Bolstering Detonation, which grants class ability energy when we cause damage with a grenade. And thanks to Heart of Inmost Light, this class ability energy will feed directly back into our grenades when we use it. For the boots, I'm using Absolution, which will grant energy to our abilities upon an orb pickup, with my class item having the Bomber mod for grenade energy on the use of Thruster. Lastly, as a bit of a miscellaneous mod that relates to grenades, we of course have Ashes to Assets on the helmet for super energy on grenade kills. With step 1 achieved, our focus on grenade generation, let's now talk about orbs of power because these are going to be crucial for a multitude of things in this build, so we'll need to be generating them at a consistent rate. 
Firstly, I want to talk about the elemental charge mod, which I have on the boots. With the amount of ionic traces that we'll be generating through abilities, it's imperative that we find a way to further put them to use, and that's by converting them into armor charges, aka giving them the same functionality as picking up an orb. Having consistent armor charges is a must if we're going to utilize Grenade Kickstart to its fullest extent, and having a means to get charges just by picking up traces is going to be huge. Speaking of Grenade Kickstart, our gauntlets will also feature the Fire power mod alongside it which will allow us to turn those grenade kills into more orbs to feed back into the gameplay loop that we've created. Next, let's talk about Harmonic Siphon on the helmet. We're already going to generate Ionic Traces on Arc Weapon Kills thanks to Spark of Discharge, so why not double dip and allow those Arc Weapon Kills to create orbs as well? We can also get guaranteed orbs whenever we want by slotting Reaper on the class item. This will make sure that our next weapon final blow after we use our thruster will generate an orb so we know exactly when we're going to get one. And finally, alongside Reaper, I've also slotted Powerful Attraction which will grant us the ability to pick up a majority of our orbs without even trying to because simply activating our thruster will pick them up in a fairly large radius around us. Now what good is a mountain of orbs and a pouch of grenades if we can't stay alive to actually collect said orbs and throw those grenades? Well time to address our third goal of the build, survivability. This build can feel very much like a glass cannon compared to its solar and strand titan counterparts, so let's make sure that it doesn't feel quite as squishy by taking some safety measures. Firstly, we'll be equipping the knockout aspect. This aspect will not only allow our melee attacks to deal more damage and increase our melee range, but it'll also generate health for us on the spot after defeating a target with a melee kill. Next, we'll be throwing on the Spark of Resistance Fragment, which will give us a 25% damage resistance when near enemies. Given how our melee ability plays a big part into generating energy, we're going to be nearby some pretty dangerous foes quite often. Lastly, we're going to slap on our final few mods. First, we have your usual resist on the chest piece, which we do not want to miss out on, and this is entirely going to depend on the activity you're running, as well as the enemies that you're facing. And after this, of course, we have one of the most important mods in the entire build, Recuperation. I cannot tell you how many times this mod has saved my ass when I was in the thick of battle. Simply playing the game normally with the powerful attraction mod on means that dodging to get ability energy back will also pick up nearby orbs, and with this mod, those orbs will keep you alive and well when things get really hairy. Because when you take a step back and look at our three goals, we're constantly regenerating grenades which would dominate the battlefield, we spec'd really hard into generating as many orbs as possible, many of them coming from grenade kills, and now that we have a metric shit ton of orbs of power being generated, not only can we use those to generate even more abilities, but we also have them lying around as miniature health packs that we can pick up when the going gets tough. With that said, any soldier, no matter how tough, will not be able to succeed without the right arsenal at their disposal, so I want to give you a comprehensive list of what I personally would use to make this build as effective as possible. Firstly, for our kinetic slot, my number one recommendation for this is going to be conditional finality. Now, I only just got this weapon recently. And that was after 80 runs of Ruta Nightmares, so I totally get if not everyone has this weapon. It's a really big recommendation for me though because it fits perfectly into the playstyle of being close and personal with your enemies. Because this build rewards that style of play, you'll get tons of use out of this thing and it also acts as an intrinsic unstop weapon since shattering them out of a stasis freeze will cause a stun. If you're unable to go the route of conditional finality, then Wither Horde is always just a solid option to run when you don't have anything else. I'm also a fan of New Pacific Epitaph here as well because it's the only kinetic slot Waveframe GL and it just so happens to roll with Demolitionist, so you can get grenades back on an insane cadence, so definitely don't sleep on that GL if you get the right roll. Aside from these special weapons, you can use whatever your favorite primary is for this slot as well. If you plan on using the likes of Forbearance or even Dead Messenger in the energy slot, because Dead Messenger especially would be batshit insane for this build because because of the new demo perk, so I would pair it with maybe something like Submission or Fatebringer here in the Kinetic slot. For the Energy slot, we're going to be focusing on Arc Weapons, because obviously, kills from them will generate us Ionic Traces, and we already mentioned Dead Messenger with Demo and Forbearance, so let's talk about some primary options. 
Obviously, use what you most prefer here, but arc primaries that roll Demolitionist are going to be absolutely huge. Think of weapons like Brigand's Law, Out of Bounds, Oversoul Edict, and maybe even the Ikelos SMG V2, but as I said, you can just easily run whatever your favorite is. One of my most used weapons when running this build is Nation of Beast, because it's just my favorite hand cannon, so don't feel like any arc primary with demo is like an absolute must-have. You can definitely live without it. And now for the heavy slot, this one can genuinely be whatever you need it to be. If you're doing raid boss DPS, then obviously pick something like Cold Comfort or Apex Predator. These are going to be massive regardless of their element. But for general play, by far, my favorite pick is the new Song of Ear U machine gun. This weapon can rock either Reconstruction or Demo paired with Sword Logic, and it will absolutely shred for you and generate an incredible amount of ability energy too. If you somehow didn't use your exotic slot for either your energy or kinetic, then Thunderlord here would obviously be a massive power play as something to double down on overloads with, as well as it just being a great ad clear weapon and decent for beefy enemies too. Once all of this is thrown together, the exotic armor, the subclass abilities, the mod synergies, and even the proper weapon setup, you'll find that this Arc Titan build is just absolutely out of this world in terms of how effective it is inside of any sort of scenario. Raids, dungeons, GMs, you name it, and this build will absolutely have you performing at the highest level of your fire team, despite all the odds of the chess piece receiving a nerf. And with that, my friends, this is one of my favorite all-time Titan builds alongside all of the ins and outs that you need to know for you to be at the top of your game. Throwing this video together has honestly been a blast, technical issues and server issues aside, so let me know if you would like to see more in the future. I still have tons of Warlock builds I could get out to you guys, uh, maybe even some Hunter builds later down the line, so please just let me know. Um, speaking of comments, by the way, shout out to all of my word of the day enjoyers from my last upload, as you guys have absolutely been going above and beyond. To support the channel like seriously the youtube algorithm is relentless so i really appreciate it word of the day today though is titman and that's what i frequently call titans on stream and this is a titan build video so why the hell not you know when you clicked on this video you probably didn't anticipate typing titman in the comments try saying that three times fast um but you know here we are sometimes the world has a really funny way of making things work anyways Thank you all so much for the support on my videos this season. I'm so sorry that it went so long without an upload. Just the, the weapon bug going on. Nobody's going to want to watch a build video when they have unlimited ammo GLs. And, you know, the DDoSing stuff has made it pretty, pretty hard for me to uh, record and get these videos out to you guys. But I hope that you all enjoyed this one regardless. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.